Another main suspect is this crime boss, Amir Molnar, who happens to be an explosive expert. And when I say he's an explosive expert, I literally mean he was trained by the Israeli army as an explosive expert in the Golani Brigade, which is sort of, you know, this respected infantry brigade. Molnar was also the son of a police officer. He came up in, in like a street gang of sorts and fought a blood war against others in the 90s. In the early 2000s, a member of his gang decides to become an informant and fearing arrest, Molnar flees overseas, which is something that seems to happen a lot with Israeli organized crime figures. They just kind of like dip out to South America, to Morocco. They're all over the place. And I mean, the Israeli police, Ben, you can tell us more. They seem kind of incompetent when it comes to, to stopping these guys sometimes, both because their criminal justice system is weak and because these guys are, are smart. And it's kind of reminiscent to me of European police, say in like Sweden, who are basically useless, for lack of a better word, when it comes to stopping organized crime and have a super lax system that always has these guys going in and out like a revolving door. Uh, while Molnar is overseas, the witness in his case, the guy who got flipped, survives one assassination attempt. And then in June of 2004, two hitmen scale a building and kill him in his living room. So Molnar returns to the country shortly after. The murder, of course, has never been solved. A few years after he returns, Molnar and Al Perone get into it. They have a meeting at a hotel, a sit down to sort of negotiate a turf dispute. And one of the Alperones, I think Ben points out, it's, it's the son, Drawer, who's supposed to be a hothead, right. ends up stabbing Molnar in the, in the neck. Yeah, he ended up stabbing him in the neck. Yeah. That's kind of the moment where if, if he had any intentions of not following the same line of work as his dad, the, the moment he stabbed Amir Molnar in the neck, now you got to kind of, that's kind of, now you've chosen that profession. I don't think, you know, you're not going to go to a startup, you know, you're, you're now in this life. Yeah, I'm, I'm no mafia expert either, but you got to imagine Molnar wasn't fond of that incident and wanted some revenge. Yeah. Anyway, a year later, Molnar goes on to become sort of a media darling doing, due to being a bit of a, a, just a wild guy. In 2013, a lawyer working a case against him, his car explodes, which is kind of standard procedure for Israeli mafia guys. But Molnar decides to represent himself in court after getting arrested, I think for something else, and he gives up his right to an attorney. And apparently he just kills it. I mean, he washes the prosecutors, he interrogates the hell out of the police officers taking the stand, and he wins the case. And in another story, another incident, Molnar's arrested and during the interrogation, like in, in that room, he takes his schwanz out and just pees against the wall right in front of the detectives. Uh, he claims they didn't allow him a bathroom break and had no choice, and of course, he gets released on whatever charge that was as well. I would, you know what, honestly, I would, I would give him the benefit of the doubt on that. I find that there's a, a shortage of... Um, public bathrooms in Israel. You don't really find them as much as you'd hope to. But I would also say I could see them hold them in there and not letting them go take a piss. You know, that, that's definitely possible. I think with, with, with Molnar, um, part of his like public persona was always this just quiet looking dude. Like he just, a man of few words. Like he just seemed very in control of everything. That doesn't mean he always was. Um, but I think him, him more or less staying out of trouble for the most part, considering everything he's done allegedly. He's a very smart guy. He's very sophisticated. He's been doing this for a long, long time. People fear him and aren't going to aren't going to talk about him and talk to the police. And he's always had very good attorneys. He was represented by a guy for a long time uh, named Moti Katz, who also represented the Rosenstein and the Musli brothers. He, these guys have money and they have loyalty from the guys they're with, and and they know not to talk. They know they're not like these these new younger guys, uh, these mob heirs like Droy Opera we mentioned who. You know, they were born into a family that was that was set up and had money, so they never had to make it on their own. Um, that older generation was is not that Amir Molnar is not that old, but the generation before, they whatever they got, they built their own way and they did it themselves because they had street smarts and they knew how to stay out of trouble. So, so guys like them, him, do a good job at that. I just share one other anecdote about Amir Molnar, which I got I heard from one guy in the hip hop scene in Israel and another guy confirmed it at a party but didn't want to talk about it. Apparently about a decade or something ago, Amir Molnar uh flew Coolio to Israel to do a a, a, <laughs> a gig. From the story from what I understand, and, and this is what makes it very believable to me because it sounds like such a, a kind of Israeli um certain type of Israeli dude thing. They just really liked Gangster's Paradise. We love that song. We love it. So some of his dudes flew, apparent allegedly flew, flew him out here to do a show. It was at this club, but the promoters, it was somewhat, that's what I understand. I, I can't confirm that, but, um, you know, we're, we're happy to talk about Coolio on this show too. 
that's the type of power you have. If you can, that's the type of power you can get. You can get Coolio on a commercial flight, and uh, you know, all these years later, flying Coolio out in like 2010 to perform that song is just like the perfect level of Israeli cheesiness. You know? Yeah. Like you gotta, you gotta uh, middle aged Israeli cheesiness. You gotta respect that. No, I think yeah. It's um, also, I mean, one of the one of the aspects of living in Israel is that you're never more than, let's say, 48 hours from hearing. This is how we do it by Montel Jordan somewhere still, <laughs> or if I got five on it by Luna. It's like you're you're still going to hear that, so it's not surprising that um, you know Coolio still has a base at least with that one hit. You know, 